Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Thanks for checking out the channel where recently on a live stream, we built this, an amazing little dipole for QRP work, utilizing Wago connectors, an FT82-43 toroid, and a BNC connector. Today I'll show you in just a few steps how you could build your own BNC connector Wago dipole. But I'd like you to keep in mind during this that there's nothing saying you can't put a FT140-43 toroid in here with an SO239, or keep the BNC, I don't care. Anyway, let's get started building this, and this is what you're going to need. You're gonna to need two Wago connectors. You can get them at stores like Ace Hardware, The Ham Depot, or of course, Amazon.com, linked below. An FT82-43 toroid, which is available on sites like digikey.com. about six feet of 22 gauge magnet wire. A BNC connector. Just a little bit of 550 cord. And some three quarter inch marine grade heat shrink tubing. I picked mine up at Harbor Freight. And now, because of course we're making a build today, we're going to need a few things like a soldering iron with solder and of course, maybe a multimeter to be able to test everything out toward the end. First, let's take our magnet wire and our small little toroid and we're going to wrap our toroid. We're going to do so in a crossover configuration. And what that means is we're going to start basically on one end where we have two wires and we're going to finish on the opposite end. To do that, we have to have a crossover in the middle, and this is how it's going to look. Straighten the magnet wire out, then fold it in half. And as we fold it in half, we want to make sure that no ends are going to cross over. We're going to start with this closed end here. And as you can see, it's already crossed over. And basically what we're going to try to do is keep everything equal. So we're going to start off by coming up from the bottom, and we're going to bring just a small end over the top. This constitutes as a turn as both pieces of magnet wire have went through the inside. Keeping in mind, we don't want this wire to cross over. Now there's a couple things we could do here. You could use your thumb and you could hold this while you wrap this, or you can get a zip tie and you can zip tie the magnet wire onto the toroid for temporary use. It'll look like this. This gives us plenty of extra wire for where we will put our BNC or connector Wago connectors, but also kind of helps hold the magnet wire in place, at least temporarily. As you can see, the wires still have not crossed over. So we're going to bring these wires under, and then we're going to go back inside the loop. And we're going to pull out the two pieces of wire. So we have another turn, ensuring there's still no crossover. And we're going to do this three more times on this side. Again, we now count each of the turns by each time that it crosses through the center hole. And that means we have one, two, three, four, five turns. And now with this next turn, the six, we're gonna go under, then we're gonna go through the hole and then over the other side. Now is also a good time to ensure that you don't have anything crossed over. If you do, it's a good time to go back and fix it. Now my toroid winding looks like this for the crossover. As you can see, I came over the inside and around the outside, came under and through the loop across and then over and down. This constitutes as six turns. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now that we have our sixth turn, all we're gonna do is we're gonna start wrapping around the toroid again, but we're gonna bring it this way which should bring us out at turn 11, right about here. Also a very important note is as you're wrapping the toroid, you wanna make sure that you don't go over that crossover with your magnet wire. Doing so will cause it to, when you pull on the magnet wire, pull that crossover toward one side. And basically we're trying to keep everything equal spaced. If we count our toroid turns now, we have one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So let's go ahead and leave ourselves some extra wire to work with and cut off the extra magnet wire. 
Next up, let's go ahead and cut that loop. Now we have two open ends, two on each side at least. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape away just a little bit of magnet wire on each end. We're then gonna get a multimeter and we're gonna make sure that there's continuity between two pieces of the magnet wire, which is essentially the same piece of magnet wire, but not all of the magnet wire. What we're doing is ensuring that there's no shorts in our winding. If any time wire gets exposed and these two short outer touch, your one-to-one -one bellend then becomes pretty inefficient. To do this, I've set my multimeter to continuity. Additionally, I'll turn on the speaker so that I could hear a beep when there is continuity. Beep. Now what I'm going to do is that wire where I stripped away, I'm gonna place one prong on one end, and then I'm gonna use the other prong on both ends on the opposite side to see which end has continuity, hopefully only one. Beep. And no continuity. So that's a great thing. We now know that both pieces of wire are separate. And if we want to, we could double check the opposite side. Beep. Good. We've now hit this point where we want to connect our Wago connectors to our magnet wire, and we want to keep them as close to the toroid as possible. To do that, I'm just going to kind of get a gauge here. Half of this Wago connector is where this magnet wire can fit in. In other words, this magnet wire cannot go all the way through. There is a block halfway through, which is still conductive. So... As we could see here, we probably want to cut right around here. And then after we cut, because we measured, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that zip tie off. It's not really needed anymore. But what I would do is I would make sure that while you're cutting the zip tie, you don't cut the magnet wire. And now we have two pieces of magnet wire where our Wago connectors are going to go. And I'm just going to scrape away that enamel so that the wire is exposed or the copper is exposed. There are better ways to scrape away your magnet wire. Uh, a razor would be better. But I find in a pinch, I could use these wire cutters. Now, as we put that magnet wire inside the Wago connector and we shut down, hopefully if we did this correct, it should be nice and secure. And it is. So we'll do that with the opposite end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check continuity one more time. Basically, now we're checking continuity in between every step so that we can ensure where the problem is before it becomes too much of a problem. I mean, if you get three steps ahead and then you find out you did have continuity or you didn't have continuity or there's a problem, it's a lot harder to troubleshoot three steps ahead. Oh, which step did I have that problem with? By the way, with these Wago connectors, there's a little uh, groove, if you will, where there is metal exposed. And so we can put our multimeter or our prongs for our multimeter in there, and we can check for continuity. I forgot to turn on the sound setting, so we can't hear it. Beep. But also, we'll just one more time check the other end to make sure there's not continuity between the two pieces of wire. And then we'll check the continuity of the other one. Beep. Good to go. Now we actually have this really unique thing that we might want to do right here. As you can see, these Wago connectors are separate. They are they keep coming apart. It looks ugly. We could gently super glue them together. Or you could find a way to plug these tabs and connect them. In the past, I have made a little bridge, if you will, uh, with... 3D printer and some ABS filament. Today I'm just going to super glue them because I believe everybody has access to super glue. And I don't know that I need to caution you, but hey, you're working around super glue, be a bit careful. And what I want to do is I'm going to do my best to super glue where I can still open the tabs. Basically, I want to super glue on the sides where it won't affect those tabs, and we don't need too much. And then all I'm going to do is, and I know I got some super glue right there, so I'm going to be careful, but I'm just going to hold these together for a moment. And now they should stay together relatively well. 
while, if I did this right, still opening OK on the top. An alternative option you can do is before you put them on the magnet wire, but after you've measured everything out on the toroid to make sure it will fit, you then carefully glue the sides, ensuring that none of the super glue leaks over to the hinges. So the hinges still work, but you have one piece Wago connector. This is actually a lot easier. Just like that. And now, of course, we need to add our BNC connector onto these pieces of magnet wire. But again, we're going to do so so the BNC is as close to the toroid as possible. First thing I want to point out, this is going to be a, a cut where we don't want to cut both of them the same length. One length is going to be a little bit longer to reach out to that, what they call the outer shield tab. And so we're going to have our center conductor, which we're going to be able to cut relatively short, as we can see here. And then as you can see, my outer shield tab is sticking straight out. We're going to leave it like that for a moment, and we're going to cut that outer shield to be right about there. And then, of course, we're going to go in here, and we need to leave a little bit of room because, of course, that magnet wire is going to go into that center conductor, if you will, uh, a little bit. So we're going to just cut a little bit extra off here. It's always good to have extra and have to cut down than to not have enough. And again, we're going to strip away some wire. And now we're going to pull out our soldering iron. And while the soldering iron heats up, I'm going to simply place my magnet wire in the BNC spot. As we can see, maybe I have a little bit extra room to work with if I need to cut a little bit more down. But also what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, what they would call counterpoise or outer shield magnet wire through that tab slot while also pushing down on the tab so that the tab is facing toward the actual magnet wire itself. This gives a little bit more compact capabilities. It also gives us a little more soldering room. Admittedly, I'm not the best guy in the world at soldering. In fact, I suck at it. But that's the joy of radio is we get to experiment, we get to learn, and we get to build on our skills. Now, if you have a flux pen, you could put some flux on both the inner shield or the center conductor and the outer shield, and this will allow for a better bond between the solder and the part you're soldering. Yeah. What I ended up doing is I ended up bending the magnet wire on the top, adding flux, because flux really helps the the solder flow onto the parts you're trying to solder and then I was able to solder that magnet wire on and the same thing internally here. Again, there's always room for improvement and I'm not afraid to admit that. But we want to make sure there's continuity. The outer shield, no beep. The outer shield, beep. Good to go. Now we're going to do the center conductor. No continuity, that's good. Beep. Good to go. Now there's a couple things you could do at this point. Realistically, you could hook up two more pieces of magnet wire to a BNC. So you have two BNCs on each side. And you could use a piece of test equipment uh, like this common mode choke test rig from Hellabit Electronics. This will give you an idea of how efficient and effective your choke actually is. Furthermore, you could hook up an SWR meter antenna analyzer with a 47 ohm resistor jumped in between and you should get a result that kind of looks like this. My 47 ohm resistor is bridged between the outer shield and the center conductor and then I'm coming out into this standing wave ratio or antenna analyzer and from 1 megahertz to 30 megahertz we could see 1.14, 1.13, Basically, all we're looking at here is that we have consistent low standing wave ratio, and there's not a bunch of fluctuations in our SWR. This by no means tells us how efficient and effective our choke is. Again, for that, you would want something like this. We're at this point where we want to basically heat shrink everything. It helps really keep it tight and together. 
and keeps it from like loosening up, right? Also, it looks good with the soldering job. Uh, but I do think that maybe I don't have enough heat shrink tubing. And the reason is, is I'm partially covering the BNC now and I come up to here and I'm not really covering the bottom half of the Wago connectors like I would like to, to make it look kind of like that. So we're going to pray that I have some extra marine grade heat shrink. And I'm going to cut it right about here. And I know you're thinking, oh, you forgot to put the 550 cord on there for the strain relief. Nope, I'm just checking right now to make sure everything's going to fit okay. And maybe I have a little bit extra right now, so that'll, that'll be okay. We could always cut down just a little bit more. But yep, we're going to want to go ahead and put our 550 cord in there as well. And again, if we add a loop on the bottom, this will be able to like give us some strain relief for when we put our cable through here, our coax through here. So if we want to, we could put a loop through the bottom as well as a loop through the top so we could hang this on a tree or put a little connector on it so we can go on top of a mast. Some people might be worried, and I just want to point it out, I don't really have a solution, but they might be worried about strain relief at a 90 degree angle on the Wago connectors. I don't think it'll be a huge problem. Briefly, I'm going to take a little bit of heat or a lighter to the ends of this 550 cord. This just helps keep everything together. I caution you if you're going to do this, be careful because melting nylon is pretty much like napalm. If it gets on you, it burns and it burns. Now this would be all good and well. We have our 550 cord on the opposite end. But again, the problem is, is now we won't be able to open the tabs. So these are the things that you want to take into consideration while you're, you're doing this. And all I'm going to do now is just maybe cut a little bit of this away. I think right there is going to be very nice. And my 550 cord, I'm going to push this side down a little bit more because I could see the opposite side, but I can't really see this side. So I'm just going to try to get it down in there a little bit more. And then when I feel like I'm ready, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun. Now I caution you with the heat gun because this is going to get hot. If you do this, you're going to burn yourself. I have to make these disclaimers for some reason. Now it would be very simple to have some kind of 3D designed and printed rectangular shape device that holds everything together in a straight line so it looks a little bit better. And then maybe even the B and C has a little connector to go through, but it still all fits in the palm of your hand. Of course, this episode was more geared toward anybody can make this even if you don't have a 3D printer. And now I'm going to take the BNC for my antenna, if you will, and I just like to make sure that everything fits okay. One thing you'll notice, though, is if you go to take this out, Maybe you want to support the end of the BNC just so it doesn't move around too much. Mine seems to be okay, but you might notice a little bit of play or wiggle room right here. But again, when that marine grade heat shrink tubing cools down, it really does provide a pretty strong bond. Now, if you were to have had that strain relief down here, you could put the coax through the strain relief and then through the BNC for just a little bit of relaxation on the coax, if you will. However, the final step or two steps would be number one, check continuity again. Ensuring that there's continuity, now you go out to the field, you measure your wires, always measure long, cut them, hook them up and make sure your dipole is functional. You might have to tune your wires and so forth, but this is a Wago dipole. And I think it's pretty cool. As an added bonus, since it is the holiday season, you could wear these as earrings or as a necklace when you go visit your favorite loved ones. Thanks for watching the channel, everybody. Hope you have a good one, 73. This holiday season, give her what she really deserves. He went to dudes.